Intel is fighting back against the ARM revolution, fighting the Snapdragon X Elite and Apple Silicon with their brand new Lunar Lake architecture, which by the way, is a full redesign, which I'm gonna explain and compare to the competitors in this video. Now, Intel flew us out to Taiwan, Taipei, right before Computex, and they treated us to a bunch of things. Full disclosure, it was really nice, but they did say they invited us because they're trying to break the narrative that x86 is dead at least for laptops so they made the new lunar lake and they say that it's a huge deal and based on everything that they've showed us already this actually is a really big deal and i believe that it's going to be enough to keep x86 running and performing and competing just fine for at least the next few years, so let's dig in. Now the biggest advantage that Lunar Lake has is that it's built on TSMC's N3B process, at least the compute tile is, with the performance and e-cores and everything else, and that's exactly what Apple is using for their M3 chip, which means it's gonna be very, very efficient. But the biggest deal is that they've completely rethought and redesigned everything with the Lunar Lake package or SOC with efficiency in mind. For example, they've disabled hyper-threading on the Lunar Lake performance cores to save more power. And for the first time ever, they've placed memory on package. Yes, they've never done this before, just like what Apple did with the M1 with unified memory. They've added a ton of caches to the chip itself and the crazy thing that they've made the chip smaller than the previous Meteor Lake chips. They're saving about 250 millimeters squared of motherboard space, which is really cool. It's a tiny, tiny chip and it's more powerful and there's no more U chips or H chips. It's literally just one SKU that has a range of power that can be added to it by the OEM or the laptop manufacturer, which they have said they're working with 20 plus OEMs, which is really cool. And they've also completely redesigned their thread director and their scheduling system, which is gonna get a lot of efficiency gain. So let's get into their numbers. They're saying that Lunar Lake has up to 40% lower SOC power compared to Meteor Lake. Their integrated graphics is up to 1.5 times faster. And this chip is absolutely insane for AI performance in terms of platform tops. First of all, their upgraded NPU now has 48 tops measured at int 8. On the graphics side, they have up to 67 tops of GPU AI power and about five tops for the CPU. This, by the way, is a major improvement compared to their previous Meteor Lake chip. That chip had 11 tops for the NPU with two neural processing units. They've now tripled that to six units and each unit is about 45% faster. So going from 11 to 48, which is nuts. And the total tops for the entire Meteor Lake chip, 34 compared to 120. So this is basically gonna be the best, I think, AI chip on the market. And it's gonna go into a massive amount of Windows laptops, which is gonna be a huge advantage for Intel staying in the market. And now let's dig deep into the Lunar Lake chip architecture. In terms of the memory on package, it's LP DDR5X DRAM. It has four channels, 16 bits each, and it's gonna have a choice of either 16 gigs RAM or 32. As far as the core design, every single Lunar Lake is an eight core hybrid design with four E cores and four P cores, brand new redesigned cores, brand new architecture across the board. They have higher caches on all of them for the performance cores and for the E cores with four megabytes of shared L2 cache. You can see this chart right here, which shows just how powerful these E cores are, being even more powerful at these power levels right here in the middle until it switches over to the P cores, which are up to 50% faster in terms of peak performance. They've also got a brand new XE2 GPU architecture, which is gonna be the same architecture for their better desktop chips, but it's basically an eight core GPU with each one having dedicated ray tracing units. In terms of their display and media engine, they're now supporting 
VVC decode, which is H.266, which is really cool. So you're kind of future-proofed there. But the most important part about Lunar Lake is the new four E-core cluster. Now these are low power E-cores, which are replacing Meteor Lake, which used to have basically four kind of mid-range E-cores and two low power E-cores in the basically low power island. Now it's up to four very efficient E-cores and it's working alongside their new thread director, which is working very, very well with their scheduling. You can see the slide right here showing how Raptor Lake used to work, how Meteor Lake used to work. Now it's basically you have one cluster for the E-cores and the main goal is to use the E-cores first. So if you have a task, it'll turn on one E-core. Yes, they can all work independently, which is really cool. This is a new change for them. It's gonna turn on one E-core. If that's not enough, it'll turn on all four of the E-cores. And if it detects that it's not enough, yet again, it'll finally move over to the P-cores. Here you can see an example of how Meteor Lake used to work. And it was basically turning off the low power E-cores when you have a nice jump in CPU utilization and using the P and E cores basically all the time. Now it's not gonna work that way at all. It's gonna try to get as much done on the E cores as possible, which you can see right here, which is gonna save so much power having the entire P core cluster shut off completely. And that's the nice thing about having E cores that are more powerful, which we do have in Lunar Lake. The main goal is if you're not using productivity apps and workloads, the P cores are not gonna run at all. Everything's gonna happen with the E cores, which is gonna save so much battery life, so much so that I think that Lunar Lake and Intel are actually gonna be very competitive in terms of battery life, competing with the Snapdragon X Elite, which basically just has 12 P cores, essentially, or all cores, and Apple's M4, which we will see how good the M4 chip's gonna be because those do have new architecture for the cores as well. For example, here we have Microsoft Teams, and you can see that Teams is staying within the efficiency zone and running almost exclusively on the E-cores, which is helping save 35% battery life with this new thread director running. But now I wanna dig a little bit deeper in the E-cores and the P-cores. The new E-cores are called SkyMont, and you can see the IPC gain right here with Integer, 1.38x better IPC, and FP, 1.68x, so somewhere in between there across the board, which is really, really impressive. And in single-threaded workloads, it has the same performance at one-third of the power, which is just insane. And at the same amount of power, 1.7x performance, this is single thread. And if you clock it a little bit higher, which it can, double the performance compared to the Meteor Lakes E-Cores. And then looking at multi-threaded, with all four of the E-Cores working together, at the same amount of power, almost triple the performance, which is just nuts and it can scale the power much, much more, which is so important, up to 4X the performance. So just imagine the tasks that required more performance previously. It could now do those tasks with only the E cores alone, which is just nuts. And then as for the P cores, they basically made everything better, completely redesigned. They have a new split out of order engine. These P cores have around 14% IPC gain and it can get up to 18% at lower power, which you can see right here on this chart. They've also redesigned their platform controller tile, so they have Wi-Fi 7 integrated, they have Bluetooth 5.4, they have integrated Thunderbolt 4 up to three ports, integrated PCI Gen 5. There's just so much architecture to unpack here, but let me share my personal thoughts. I was the guy who was saying that x86 is dead, that Intel is going to lose the laptop market, and I do believe that x86 does not have a very long time, especially when Qualcomm starts making better and better chips, same with Apple making really good chips, but with TSMC's N3B node and this complete architecture redesign and their complete focus on efficiency and e-cores, I think they're gonna be just fine 
for the next few years, starting with Lunar Lake with this new eight core chip. But I did talk to some executives, asking them some questions, and I was able to dig out a little bit more info Apparently with Panther Lake, which is gonna be kind of the next gen refresh of what we're seeing here, they are gonna be adding more and more cores to make more powerful chips to compete with Apple's M4 Pro, with their M4 Max. I'm not sure when these are gonna come out, but there are gonna be more cores. And the nice thing is that we're gonna have all these efficiency gains for those as well. So I think they're gonna compete very well. And in terms of when these are gonna come out, they should be starting to come about the third or fourth quarter. That's when we should be seeing these and comparing them to likely Apple's M4 Max that are gonna come in the fall. So with that said, thank you Intel for bringing us out here, inviting us to your Intel tech tour. I think you guys did a great job with this. I'm very impressive with your efficiency gains and I can't wait to see how it's gonna translate over to real laptops. So if you enjoyed this video, let me know your thoughts and questions down below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Good? <laughs>